Hi everybody, my name is Julian and today I'm going to show you how to set up a GTD style to-do list in Notion. So I saw this video by Karma Medic where he shows you a really cool way to use this, but he doesn't talk about the mechanics of exactly how to set it up. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to build that system from scratch using mirrored databases. A to-do list basically has two kind of competing priorities. The first is to hold all of the things that you need to do. The second is to help you prioritize the tasks so that they're not overwhelming. So we're gonna achieve that by creating an inbox where we can just dump out all of the tasks that we need to do and then set up a bunch of filters so that they basically disappear and then only reappear in the context or at the time when they're relevant. All right, so let's build this thing. This system of disappearing tasks kind of makes me think of chipmunks stashing away nuts. And so I'm gonna use them as our mascot here and set up a heading called inbox. Under that heading, we'll create what's called an inline database. In our database, we can create different fields. So I'm gonna create a date field called due date, a select field called category, and then a checkbox field called completed, so I can check when my tasks are done. And I'm gonna throw in some example categories. So let's say a top, like for top priority, low for low priority, and an ask my boss. And now I'm gonna copy and paste some example to-dos. All right, so we've got our inbox set up and we have our database. What we want to happen eventually is that we'll enter a bunch of stuff in our inbox and then it will disappear and then reappear in the appropriate context. So let's create the other contexts. I'm gonna make one for things that are due today, uh, one that's for due this week, um, one that's for anything where I need to ask my boss, and then one for completed tasks, so just an area where I can see everything that I've done. So this is the point where we start mirroring the database. And basically what we're doing here is we're gonna create a bunch of copies of this first database and they're all gonna act like a bunch of voodoo dolls. If you change some data about a task in one, you have changed it everywhere. But even though each mirrored database has the same data in it, we can filter it to only show certain pieces of that data. So under my do today heading, I will search for a table view and then link to the tasks database. Now that I've done that, you can see that this looks exactly the same as the database that we already created because it's a mirror image of it. Now I'm gonna go and filter where the due date is on or before today. This shows only tasks that are due today or before today. Next we'll do due this week. So I'm gonna create a table view linked to the tasks database and then filter where the due date is on or before one week from today. For ask my boss, I'm going to filter where the category is ask Jordan, my boss. And then for completed, we'll filter where completed is checked. Note that you can add multiple filters to each mirrored database. So for example, if we want to filter to see only uncompleted tasks on all of the previous headings, we can do that. All right, so now we can see that our tasks are showing up in the right places, but they're all still showed in the inbox as well. So our last thing is to get everything out of the inbox when it's already been assigned a place. So to do that, I'm gonna filter the inbox where due date is empty. In other words, if something hasn't been assigned a due date yet, it will stay in the inbox. And as soon as it has a due date, it will move only to the context where it's relevant. It'll be disappeared from the inbox. So that's how to set up the mirror databases. You can create a mirror database in any page. So if you wanna move your inbox to a different page, for example, uh, you can do that. All right, last but not least, I'm gonna create a new page and create a new database called classes. Let's assume for this example that we're a student and so the task list is gonna have a class associated with each task. So this new database is going to have a list of all of our classes. A lot of these tasks are homework and often when I'm done with the homework, I have to email it to my TA. So I'm gonna create a new field that has the TA's email address that's associated with each class. Now, when I go back to our tasks list, I'm going to change the categories field into a field that just tells us which class each task belongs to. Okay, here comes the cool part. So we're gonna change the type of that classes field from a select type to a relation. 
So when I specify it as a relation, I have to say which other database it's related to. That's gonna be the classes database and I'll call it class. And now I will click add relation. So now if I want to assign a task to a specific class, I can just click in that field and I get a drop down list of all of the different classes. But wouldn't it be cool if I could bring in that email address also so that when I complete the task, I have the email address that I need to use right in front of me. We'll do that by creating a new field, call it TA email, and then specify the roll up type. So now we're gonna pick the database that we're pulling from, that would be class. And then we need to specify the field that we're gonna pull from. So that's the email field. So now when the field is created, I've got an email address for each item. Those are the basics of how to work with databases in Notion. Let me know if you wanna see any other technical breakdowns like this one for Notion features. If you're into this, I also highly recommend trying out Airtable. Airtable would allow you to set up a database like this a little bit easier, and it also allows you to do a lot of cool stuff on top of it, like set up automations. I have a lot of tutorials on Airtable, including this one, which shows you how to create automated recurring tasks for a task list. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will see you next time.